What's up, Cal Gang? All right, so we got this problem here. Uh, 3.46, let me write that down. Sweet, okay, so in this problem, we have these three forces in a bucket, right? So it's 300 pounds in the bucket that's pulling down on it, and it wants us to find the forces in all the cables. So let's just go ahead and find the forces in all the cables. So what we're gonna need to do is find the equilibrium. Um, so that's gonna be some of the, we know that some of the forces in the X and the Y and the Z is equal to zero, right? We know all of that because it's an equilibrium. So what we need to do is we need to write out these equations. So the most useful first step I'm gonna recommend is find the ratio of the hypotenuse to each one. Basically, we're gonna find the length of each one of these vectors, it's gonna become handy later. So for B, the magnitude of B, or I guess AB, you can say the magnitude of AB is equal to square root of negative three squared plus negative six squared plus six squared. I did not need to write this one. Yeah, so the magnitude of AB is equal to is equal to 9. So if you do this again, the magnitude of AC is equal to 7, the magnitude of A, uh, A B, C, D, the magnitude of AD, of course, is equal to 5. You can guess because it's just going straight out like that. So these are the important ones we need to know. I did actually write it down. I'm confused. Okay, here we go. So let's go ahead and write out our equilibriums. So let's start with, so what we want to do is find the simplest way to do this. So basically we're looking for the force directions where the least amount of forces are acting. So in the x direction, of course, this is acting in the x and those two are acting in the x. So we have three acting in the x. That's kind of confusing. It's gonna be hard when we have one equation and three unknowns. But if we look at just the z direction, right? We have this one, we have three more. But this time we have three, but we know what force of gravity is. It's given to us as 300 pounds. So if we do force of gravity in these two, then we only have two unknowns. But if we do it in the y direction, we only have these two unknowns as well. So basically, we're going to have a system of equations with two unknowns and two equations. That means we can solve for what they are. So let's start with the x, or let's start with the y direction. So some of the forces in the y is equal to zero, like I said. But let's look. So we have b. b is pushing. So it's going to be force of b, right? And then we know that the vector goes negative 6 in the y direction. So what we're doing is we're going to find the ratio of how far it goes in the y direction to its hypotenuse. So here it goes negative six in the y direction because it goes negative six this way. Like I, or like you can tell from the photo, I simplified it here. But then we know that hypotenuse is nine, so we're gonna simplify it to just in the y direction, it's gonna be negative six over nine. And you'll notice that this negative means that it's going in the negative y direction, which we can tell visually that it is. So let's go ahead and go force A, force C. So this one, it goes three in the positive y direction by our third point here, we can see from the photo that it goes three in the positive y direction. So this one's gonna be three, and its hypotenuse is seven. So we know that this is a true statement, right? Is equal to zero. Cool, okay, so we have this. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the z direction. Right, we have one equation, two unknowns. We can't figure out what these unknowns are just by this one equation. There's a whole lot of things that could go there. But if we have another equation, then we can figure it out. So force in the z direction is equal to, so we know force of gravity is pulling down, so it's gonna be negative force of gravity. And we know that that's 300, so this is not an unknown. But then it's gonna be plus force of b. And like I said, it's gonna be the ratio of the z direction to its hypotenuse. So it's right, so it's a uh, amount that it goes up in the z direction is six feet, but its hypotenuse is nine feet. So it'll be six over nine is how much we find that it pulls in the z direction. So same thing for force of c. So it's a, it pulls, what, six in, the, six in the z direction and its hypotenuse is seven. And this is equal to zero. So now we have two equations and two unknowns. We can plug in what we know here to try to simplify this a little bit. So I'm gonna go back to this equation and I'm gonna get one of these right by themselves. It doesn't matter which one you solve for first, you're gonna get the same answer. Let's say, let's solve for, um, Let's try to cancel out B first. Let's try to cancel out B. So that means I'm going to subtract this over. So you're going to get negative force C, 3 over 7, is equal to force B, negative 6 over 9. So the negatives are going to cancel out. And what I want to do is I want to get force C by itself. Or I want to get force B by itself. Excuse me. That's what I'm looking to do. Hold on. 
what am I doing to do? Now I want to get 4c by itself. Let's do that. So to do that, I'm going to multiply the 7 and divide by the 3. So 4c is equal to 7 times 6 over 3 times 9. So we're going to force the b here, right? So this becomes 14 over 9 force b. So we know that 14 over 9 force b is equal to force c, right? This is a pretty useful ratio that we're going to use. So if I go back over here, I can plug in this for force c, and now I'm force b. So we can say 0 is equal to force of gravity, which we know is 300, plus force of b. So let's just keep this the same, force of b. Uh, 6 over 9 simplifies it to 2 over 3, plus 4c. So 4c, let's plug in the 14 over 9, force b. But then, of course, the 6 over 7 also stays. So now what we can do is we can factor out the force b, right? Let's multiply the 3 over, or I guess the 300, I have 0, 0 on both sides. So 300 is equal to force b. So then it's going to be, because we're factoring it out, it's going to be 2 thirds plus 14 over 9 times 6 over 7. So from here, you can solve for force b, right? Uh, let me just see what I did. 14 over 9 times 6 over 7 plus 2 thirds. So if you simplify this just by dividing whatever number you get here, you're going to get force b is equal to 150 pounds. So we figured out one of them. Nice. Good job, us. So let's see. Let's figure out what the other one is. So using this ratio, all we have to do is plug in 150 here to find our 4c. Right, for c is equal to 14 over 9 times 150 for b, what we just found. I'm going to give you for c is equal to 233 pounds. Now, to find out what force uh, d is, right? Force d, we're going to have to do another. Um, we're going to have to find out. Or we're going to have to do another uh, equation for our equilibrium. So let's do some of the forces in the x direction, right? We know that that's equal to zero, so it's going to be equal to, this is pulling, so it's going to be force d, and it's only in the x direction, so we don't need to do any ratio things. So then it's going to be plus force b, uh, and then it's, of course it goes negative three in the x direction, so its ratio is negative three to nine, plus force c, and its ratio is negative two to seven. So if we move these over, you're going to get force D is equal to um, negative force B. So it'll be negative, whatever we found for force B, 150 times negative, negative 1 over 3, simplify the 1 third, plus the force C, which we found, although it's going to be negative here, because we're moving things over, subtraction, 2, 3, 3, times negative 2 over 7. So if you do this, you're going to get force D is equal to 117 LBS or LB. There you go. So there's your three forces. We figured it out. Uh, I'm going to make sure I did that right. Yep. Uh, yep, looks right. Okay, good job. Okay, nice. So that's how you do these kind of problems. Uh, it's kind of set about setting up ratios and knowing your equilibrium uh, equations. And then from there, you can solve. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.